housing, I guess it's a lot cheaper, as Chris said. It's you get a single apart or a single flat, and I also got lucky in that I got a single flat with my own bathroom, um, and shared a kitchen, and I think I paid five thousand a year for that. Um, it it's really cheap compared to like here where you're paying like I think it's like six hundred for t a month for twelve months, which I don't, don't want to do the math right now, but it's a lot cheaper. Uh, and it's a single room. You have to explain why you want to double, which is really nice. This is another building at the University of Edinburgh. This is actually our um, RA, is this guy right here. So you get assigned to different accommodations. I actually lived in a 12-person flat, um, and that was with people from Egypt, China, Sweden, uh, Scotland, people from, people from Edinburgh, um, but it was so cool because everyone had all of these different uh, world perspectives. Like, I lived about a mile and a half away from uh, the main campus at the University of Edinburgh, and so I would walk up the Royal Mile, and for everyone who's been to Edinburgh, that is like tourist central, but it is so much history just in this one mile walking uphill towards school, and that's like, that was my walk every day, which is not something that you experience here at all. And so I really enjoyed just being able to get to know a city and see just like so much his history in one little area. Um, I would also recommend you take advantage of your time there to travel around, which is something I definitely did. I was gone quite a few weekends, which I said is really manageable, I think. This is actually a picture of me. I went to Amsterdam, like I said, that weekend and had my flight canceled the next day, but that was amazing. Um, as far as traveling, though, Take advantage of it, but also get to know your city. I know a lot of people who would travel out a lot and never really got to know the place that they were staying in. And I think if you're going to be living somewhere, you want to learn about the city and you want to become almost like a local. So this is a view from the Edinburgh Castle that Jess showed a picture of. Just looking down over the city, you can see into the bay. And then right behind me is Princess Street, which is like one of the, like, another tourist area, but also like the shopping area of Edinburgh. This is picture of Edinburgh Castle from the National Museum of Scotland. As you can see, it does literally look like Harry Potter. Um, and finding this, which is like the rooftop of the National Museum of Scotland, it's kind of like a s small thing that not everyone knows about. So kind of, you know, if you do your research, go on like BuzzFeed or Google, like 10 kind of lesser known things to do in Scotland, you'll be able to find things that are not like super touristy, but also really cool and kind of like a local perspective of the city, which I really recommend. And then, this is also a picture of me in Glencoe in the Scottish Highlands, which is beautiful and it's like amazing and I would 100% recommend you go around there. Traveling internationally is fun, but it's also really nice to be able to get to know the culture of the country and the city that you're staying in. It's also super beautiful, like that's a castle that's just in the center of the city on a mountain um, and it's from like the oldest building there is from the 1300s. Um, and then you also have the opportunity to just go on all these amazing trips. Um, so that's my friend Sarah and I. This was right before we even started school. We went to the Highlands, um, and this train actually was the train that they used in Harry Potter 2 when it's like going over the bridge. We actually like went over that bridge, and it was so cool. I love Harry Potter, can you tell? Um, but you just have these opportunities to go and see places that, I, at least for me, I never thought I would see in my life. Um, and that's another educational opportunity in itself. So this is another photo from the Highlands, um, and we just got to hike all day, and also the Highlands are in Game of Thrones, if anyone's fans of that. Like, whenever I watch Game of Thrones, I'm like, oh my gosh, I was there. Um, so you just have these incredible opportunities to learn both in and out of the cl classroom. But honestly, throughout like all the beauty and all the things I learned, by far my favorite part about going abroad was the people. Um, something that's very similar between California and Scotland is how friendly everyone is. Uh, the amount of conversations I had with people on the bus, um, sometimes didn't understand them because their accents were so thick, but you get used to it. Um, and just different people that you meet on campus or just other UC students that you meet while abroad. Um, all of us, these we're all from different UCs, and I still get together with them. One goes to UC San Diego, one goes to UC Berkeley. Uh, but you just have this incredible opportunity to meet people from all around the world, to learn from them, to get a global perspective, to take classes abroad. Well, Scotland has so much to offer that you don't really realize, and the Highlands that I know a lot of them have talked about. But um, we, I went with a lot of use, other UC, my first UC friends, like from other UC schools, and we went on a back, 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 backers trip, and we went uh, 
for uh, four days in the highlands of Scotland. And uh, this is our tour guide. We were in kilt the whole time. Had a great Scottish accent and a, a bunch of fun Scottish stories. And I um, highly recommend checking out the country that you live in. Um, but also, of course, uh, all the other countries around because you're in Europe and so you're so central. I went to 13 countries in my five and a half months there. And I still really got to know Edinburgh. So it's very doable and it was really fun. And like um, Shandi was saying, uh, it was really nice because you're, like, you're used to having homework all the time. Assignments always do. And there, you would have weekends free. You don't have to go to the library. You would just, I would not have classes on Friday, so I'd get my flights for that night on Thursday and come back early Monday morning or late Sunday night. And it's very doable. Um, so I highly recommend doing that. Um, uh, this was my 20th birthday um, in Salamanca. Um, this was Glencoe, hiking up Glencoe. Um, these are just my first uh, friends from the UCEAP program. And this, this is on the top of Arthur's Seat, which you have to do if you go to Edinburgh. Um, if you look at any like Edinburgh like bucket list, you have to climb Arthur's Seat. Uh, it, this is an entire view of Edinburgh, all the way to the ocean. I also had to take a picture with the UCSB engineering. Um, this is the Monty Python castle. I don't know if you guys know Monty Python. Uh, this is like the castle where they do like the coconuts with the horses and um, all that stuff. Um, and then in terms of like engineering stuff that you can see, this is the Falkirk wheel for like mechanical engineers. I don't know if you guys know this. Um, it's the only um, place where instead of using like a set of, I think it's eight blocks, um, they decided to just take a giant um, wheel in a way to like take a boat from the bottom up to the top. Um, and it's actually, they I think they said that the amount of power they use is like uh, to like boil a pot of water. That's what they use to run that thing. Um, another interesting engineer is obviously the cantilever bridge. It's like the fourth of Firth Bridge. It's a famous train bridge for Emmys. Studying abroad was definitely my favorite thing I've ever done at UCSB. It's so cool to be able to go and live in another country rather than just visit it for a few weeks. You really get to know the city, you really get to know your way around. If you can't already tell, I absolutely loved it. It's one of the best decisions I've ever made, um, and I highly, highly encourage all of you to go.